Chris Coleman. I'm a project engineer here at uh, Heston with AGCO and uh, primarily responsible for electronics and software uh, in our planner group. Uh, it's been my pleasure as our company's pleasure to work with Alan the last couple of years. Uh, we hooked up via email and phone mail a couple years, uh, voicemail a couple years ago, and uh, Alan wanted uh, specific functionality that I believe most uh, uh, of our customers want. He wanted uh, point row, automatic row shut off uh, functionality liquid application that was integrated into uh, through the planner controller and uh, various uh, auto guide and, and auto steer functionality and uh, I'm thinking what else uh, you asked about. Uh, Basically when I bought this planner I was trying to set it up and all I got was well this doesn't work with this and this and this and that's when I finally called AGCO and said give me a break and they said yes it does let's do it on a pilot program. And it's been fun. Yeah. So the last a couple of years, we've been able to incorporate uh, automatic row shut off, which Alan is uh, using to uh, full capacity this year, and, and from his uh, comments has worked well. We also, for the first time, really have uh, the liquid application uh, integrated through the planter controller, and uh, that will prevent uh, controlling several liquids. The other thing Alan was interested in was uh, the uh, variable rate application, and I believe he shared with me that uh, most, if not all, of his fields this year were uh, prescription math and uh, cost savings that he's experienced with variable rate mapping. So it's just been a joy to work with him and incorporate these uh, higher level uh, technologies uh, into his plan. Yeah, the, last year we planted our irrigation variable rate because when you get under the circle you need higher population in the corners. That's not a very scientific point of view, but that's that was the that was the driving force for wanting variable rate. But I have one field that's highly variable, and we cut the seed population way back on the poor ground and raised it very high on the better ground. On the better ground, the way last year was, there wasn't a lot of difference, but on the poor ground where we put on quite a few less inputs, we actually had one of our best crops on the poor ground that we've ever had, which was really not expected. We were just trying to save money on that one. We weren't trying to increase the yield, but we actually did. Where our planter is set up with hydraulic controls, many of our customers use the hydraulic controls as a section shutoff. So they'll turn a wing off here and there. Whereas really, the variable rate drive is uh, really could be used to create prescription maps and vary your rate throughout the field automatically. Some type of manual increment or decrement uh, process. So uh, it's uh, it's a very efficient process, and, and as Alan shared, can be uh, very profitable as well. Okay, Dad, what was your first planner? Well, I don't remember. It was at Four Row International, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we went to a Six Row John Deere. Yeah. And now we're on a 16 row white. Uh, this planter's set up for no-till. Uh, I've got Sunco trash whippers and Schaefer press wheels. And then the, the thing that I like to do is try and make as few passes in the field as possible. So on the wings we have herbicide tanks so we can spray herbicide while we're going in through the field. The front tank is for 1034O, and so we put 1034O on with the Keatons, and the big tank is for nitrogen, and we dribble on our nitrogen behind. We put it on top. We don't go two by two. We put it on top. I'm Alan Schrag. This is my dad, Paul, and uh, we dad started farming in 48. I started with him when I shortly after school, and probably one of the biggest things is number one, the size of the farm, and number two, that we've gone to 100% no to. Um, right now, we're standing in a cornfield last year, and hopefully by nightfall, this will be planted to soybean. Um, Dad was saying that that he's never seen that you don't see this kind of rough, rough terrain, but we have planters 
are set up for no-till, and that's worked out really good, allowed you to farm a lot more acres with less help. In Kansas, it gets dry, and we need the cover then to, to preserve our moisture. Our operation is corn and soybeans, and then a little bit of wheat on a rotational basis. And when you were farming, it was mostly wheat, wasn't it? A little bit of milo. started with an 80, was it 160, is that where I started with? Yeah, now we're, we're well over 2,000. I'm in a agreement with Agco where we're working on new stuff and this year we've incorporated the liquid controls into the planter monitor versus having multiple monitors last year the way most people do it. And that's been a huge step because that way when you turn the planter on, you're turning all your liquids on and when it turns off, it turns off. It's all integrated. It knows what rows you're planting if your the clutches are on and we've had no trouble with it talking to each other. Like when you have multiple monitors, you have to get one monitor to talk to the other and that was problematic last year to a certain extent. That's been a huge thing. The one thing that I would really like to see Agco go in the future is I would like to have airbags that were automatically controlling my down pressure. Our soils here are quite variable and the field that we're in right now is probably one of my more consistent fields as far as the type of soil from one end to the other, but I have fields where at one corner the soil is relatively sandy, the other corner it's very, very heavy. And so when I set my down pressures, as soon as I drive 10 feet, they're wrong. And there is technology by the competitor to control that automatically, and that's what I'd like to go to next year and start testing that in a year or two and have that automatically controlled. I think, that, I think as far as yield, we're really hurting ourselves with, uh, with too much down pressure or not enough down pressure because no matter how you set it, you're wrong as soon as you move it. And this thing has been moving so fast, who knows what will happen the next year and the next year. But I think that I think that we have finally come to Moore's Law in agriculture, which means that in 18 months, it's twice as powerful at half the cost. And so if you're not ready to move, you just need to either get out of the way or hang on to your hat.